Welcome, this is Brooke Klontz with the Carly and Brooke channel, and today we're gonna talk about outlining, especially how I go about outlining. I will talk pretty frequently about a book that I'm releasing soon called Empire of Glass and Stone, because I can talk very freely about how I went about outlining that novel since I wrote it recently, and I'm very familiar with what I was thinking as I was doing it. So first, I start with the character arc. So I write YA, so I think about a lot of the YA issues that are out there, more specifically what I struggled with when I was a young adult and how that could affect other young adults out there. If I could rent a time machine and go back in time and tell myself one thing, I'm sure there are many things that I would go back and tell myself, but typically I try and focus on one thing. And one thing that I struggled with when I was a young adult was comparison and trying to fit in and stand out at the same time. And this was something that I really wanted to build into my character. My character, her name is Yakua, and she really struggles uh, feeling like she belongs in her clan. She feels like everyone hates her, which everyone does. Um, not that everyone hated me as a young adult, but this was something that I built into my character and probably took it to an extreme that I did not experience as a teenager, but I felt like was important for a young adult audience to understand and to hear my perspective on. So this was a flaw that I gave my main character. The desire to always be the center of attention, to uh, be a good contributor to her family, to help her family in any way that she could, to improve the opinions of everyone around her when really she has an obvious confidence issue where she doesn't love herself. And this was something that I wanted her to learn about, realize about herself, and overcome at the end of the book. So team, compa team comparison was what I focused on. And then I figured out what was the image that I wanted to build my book around. A lot of times when you are writing a book, you have something that inspired you, some event, something in your head that you are visualizing. And a lot of times it's a scene or a couple characters, maybe dialogue between them that inspired your whole book and your whole idea. This is something that you're gonna to wanna to put in your book somewhere. So for me, when I wrote Empire of Glass and Stone, my inspiration came when I was in Peru and I was hiking up these massive boulders. And I just had this image in my head of Cinderella climbing these boulders in her, in her glass slippers to meet her prince and uh, everything going wrong when she meets her prince or just being terrified, you know, as she's climbing this mountain. And that was a scene that I wanted to have in my book. So I figured out where I wanted to place it and, and added that to my outline. From there, I tried to figure out how can I make my character likable? So I have this law, this thing that they're going, she's going to overcome, but how can I make her smart and likable and someone that people will want to follow? If you look at the uh, Save the Cat, what, what can your character do? Who do they love? Who do they fiercely protect? Uh, you can look at Katniss as an example of that. She fiercely loves her little sister. Yakua is actually very similar in that she fiercely loves her sisters and will do anything to make sure that the negative perception of her in her village does not impact her, her sister's lives and she's, she's trying to fix things even though it's not really her place. So, and then from there, I try and figure out a midpoint. What is going to impact my main character that will make her start to change and realize that maybe what she believed about the world is wrong and, and change her perception and what she does going forward. And then the ending scene. And this can, you can figure this out before the midpoint if you want. Sometimes you can uh, sandwich it and have the ending and then the midpoint, but I had the midpoint and then the ending with Empire of Glass and Stone. So the ending, what is the flaw and how is it going to be overcome? What obstacles is your protagonist going to overcome and how is she going to emerge triumphant or you know, if it's a tragedy, not triumphant? So once I have the midpoint, the beginning and the ending, then from there I try and figure out what beats will improve my story. So I, a lot of times, will pull out Save the Cat and figure out what genre my story is and which beats apply to my story. And then I'll figure out from there if there are any beats that will improve my story and make it better. 
I love the five point ending. A lot of times I'll pull from that just to give my ending a little bit more of a dynamic feel. Bring in more characters, a little more working together. I, I love that about the five point ending. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the beats or plot points, take a look at Carly Dalton's video, uh, Story Structure and Plot Points. She goes over this and explains it really well. You can also read the book, uh, Save the Cat, and it goes over all of the plot points in detail. So I love to pull out the bo that book and I, I pull it out every time I'm outlining and just go over the beats and apply the ones that I like and that I think make my story better. I don't like to use it from the very beginning because I want my book to be very dynamic and a little more focused on the, story, the character arc than on the plot points, on hitting every individual plot point. If the character arc does not map out to the plot points very well, I'm okay with that and I just don't use them. So from there, um, I write fantasy, so fantasy world building is very important and having a creative world that will impact every scene that I'm writing. So from there I try and focus on one thing that shows up in my story a lot and is very symbolic. So for example, when I was writing Empire of Glass and Stone, my inspirational scene was Cinderella climbing these boulders. So I thought boulders and stones were very important in my story and, and had a huge impact to the world and to the culture and I built my whole world around the, the importance of stones. Glass was also important, I built that in too, but stones were my central feature and so a lot of their language even is around stones. And an example that I love to look at uh, I love Brandon Sanderson, The Way of Kings. I love how he built his whole, his whole world around the storms that come through. And you notice that they say, like, storm you all the time. Now, he, he pulled that from storms. Everything, is, everything circles around storms, storms. In Dune, it's the desert and the lack of water. Everything is around water and everything is around spice, right? So from there, when I figure out what is important in my world and what I'm going to build my world around, then I research a little bit, read some other books, try and get some inspiration, some ideas of cultural things to add to my book, uh, scenes, places. I create a map. And then when I have that, all that world building figured out, then I try and figure out who is important to my story. What characters do I want? what characters need to be there to impact my my main character and a lot of times these characters will have things about them that coincide with my character or create tension for my character so I figure out what characters I want to have and then I give them certain points that they have themselves like that I give my main character uh, a character either a character arc or just a wound something that happened to them in the past that really jaded them, even if they're not a jaded character, something that affected their view of the world, maybe gave them something false, a lie that they believe about the world. And then from there, I give them something that they want, something that they need, and I do this for my main character as well. A lot of times your wants are not your needs. Sometimes you want things that you don't need and they're bad for you and that's okay. Uh, I give them a fear as well. I love how Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes. I think especially for comedies, this is awesome to give them something that they're afraid of. Um, something else that you can do is give them a moral, especially for villains, a line that they won't, they won't cross. And then funny quirks, physical things about them, the texture of their skin, the way that they walk, the way that they talk. Maybe they have a certain mood that they're always exuding as they're speaking uh, and then I usually will try and find a picture of the way that I think my character would look uh, for Empire of Glass and Stone I had a character of I had a picture of the Emperor that really stood out to me and I assigned him to the character profile of my Emperor and I try and do that for each of my characters I don't always do it but especially for my main characters I try to so that my descriptions are consistent and then um, from there, once I figure out my character, um, I will break my scenes down. So now that I know my world, I know my characters, I can figure out what will happen in each scene. 
and, and then I'll try and map those out to the beats that I have decided to stick with, my beginning, middle, and end. And then as I'm mapping out each scene, I try and figure out an objective for that scene, something that, that the main character or the viewpoint character is trying to accomplish. Uh, an obstacle, something that's giving the scene tension, something that they're trying to overcome, something they're trying to accomplish, and what is getting in the way. Um, and then a scene, like, where is this happening? Especially for world building, what, what types of things are in the scene? What things are influencing? What's going on? What, how, are, how are the elements in the room affecting the conversation or what people are doing or how they're responding or giving them action beats that they can use? And then I give the, the scene an outcome. What's going to be the result of the scene? And then a surprise. Surprises you have to be a little bit careful with. You don't want to throw sur surprises in just willy-nilly where anything can happen and it just completely changes the story and there was no point. You want to make sure that each of your surprises have a point and a purpose and they impact the character somehow. And honestly, I try to surprise the character, not, not my readers. So, and then once you figure out all of those things, then I try and figure out what, how does this affect what the character believes? The perception that they walked in the room with. How are they leaving from here? What things have changed? Like, how has their perception changed? How is this going to affect them moving forward? Has it reinforced the lie that they believed about the world? Or has it made them realize that maybe the lie is wrong? Uh, has it changed their viewpoint in any way, shape, or form? And then once I, once I have every scene outlined, then a lot of times I end up throwing them out as I start writing. So I consider myself somewhere in between an outliner and a pantser, probably more on the outliner side, but I'm perfectly okay throwing out my outline if, it's, if I come up with some way of adding tension or if I get to know my characters better as I'm writing and I decide that they wouldn't act a certain way, I'll throw my whole outline out and start over. So I'll take my, my individual scenes, start writing them, start from the beginning, make sure that my character is likable, that it's very clear you know, what her flaws are, that she has her own individual voice. And then as I write each scene out, if it doesn't, if it doesn't start flowing with my outline, I'll just rewrite my outline and start over. And I'm okay with that. So I think it depends on your own style and your own flow. If you're not okay throwing out your outline, that's fine, it'll be individual to you. That's just what I do. And then once I have finished my first draft, a lot of times I love to send my book out to beta readers. I'm an underwriter, so by the time I finish, usually I have like 60,000 words, which isn't enough. And I'll send it out to my beta readers and a lot of times they'll tell me what things are missing. And then I'll just add another scene that adds that and make sure that each that scene has impact and has an, has an obstacle and tension and things for the characters to overcome and ways that it will change their viewpoint on the world. For multiple characters, I like to make sure that that character either has a personality that conflicts with my main character to add tension or goes along with my main character and adds to the theme or the character arc that I have added to my main character. Uh, for romantic interests, I like to make sure that they impact my character in some way that they are teaching my character something, that my character makes them better and that they make my character better. So I like to make sure that they, their character arcs or the things that they believe about the world course, correspond in some way. Not necessarily the same, but that they impact each other and um, that the strengths of one character uh, help the weaknesses of the other. I hope this is helpful to you. This is my outlining process. Feel free to take bits and pieces of it and apply it to your own creative writing process. And if you like this video, please comment, tell us about your own writing creative, creative writing process, the things that you learned by watching this video, or even if you think I missed something and there's something that you do that you think would improve my writing process, I'd be more than happy to hear it, especially anybody else who would read the comments and learn from it as well. So please like, save, subscribe, and I hope to see you on our next video. Thanks for watching.